world to obsession I'm trying to show you all I know I hope it works and you take something from this Because it's all I know When we coding guitars, bass and drums Super easily We fell right into the chorus And it feels good to me Let's do it again See, so I'm gonna double that co this chorus here. Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Arnold here, back with a follow-up to one of my previous videos where I showed some techniques for recording my song ideas and I, I built a riff with drums and bass. Uh, so if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it for you below and up here. Check that one out first as we're gonna be picking up right where we left off in that video because there was a lot of positive feedback in the comments. A lot of you guys really seem to like that video, seeing some of my techniques and the way that I'm doing things and you just kind of want to more, a lot of questions about what to do next. Uh, and one stuck out in particular, the homie Chaosware says, Thanks, Rob. I love this format. A bit longer video to really take time on a particular topic, you know, because that's what you you got to do with a topic like this. It takes a long time to explain things, even though I tried to make a streamline. Uh, but and I'm going to try to do that again. But still, there's just a lot going on here. As I mentioned in that other video, everybody's at a different skill level. Everybody uses different software to do this. So I'm trying to make it as general as possible. But you'll get the point. You'll be able to apply everything I explain here to your productions. At least I hope. At least it'll open your mind in some way, give you a different perspective about how to do things, maybe some trick or secret that you've been wondering about or you see that you'd like to implement in your workflow, and that's exactly what I'm helping you here to do. Anyways, Chaosware says, as a follow-up to this video, it would be great if you could speak about how you transform those kind of ideas into a complete song. Songwriting, basically. I accumulate a lot of ideas, riffs, etc., and I believe the most tricky part is putting it all together into something intriguing and exciting. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna build upon that first riff and we're gonna just make a, a quick, complete song. Whether it's intriguing and exciting is in the ear of the beholder, so you'll have to decide that. And, you know, I don't know that I'm call gonna call this, this song, or at least what it's gonna become, like, exciting? I don't know, I think of it more of like a, just kind of like a, a slower, groovier like type melodic track. And a lot of the time when I'm writing songs, I'll just have a riff in my head and I'll think the song is gonna go in one direction, but I let the song lead me in the direction it wants to go. Sometimes I start off with something in, in mind that I think is gonna be like techy or death metal-y or just super heavy or rocking or whatever, but it doesn't always end up that way. As I said, I let the song just kind of take me where it wants to go. So I read this comment this morning from Chaos Ware, sitting in the shower thinking, what would I do next? What would what would the riff be next? And that's, that's how I do it. I just let it, it speak to me. As I hear the riff, let's say I lay down one riff and then right when it ends, I have the guitar in my hand and I say, where does it want to go? So in this case, I didn't have the guitar in my hand, but I had it in my mind. And uh, real quick, I've brought up the exact same session from before, exactly where we left off. For anybody that doesn't know, or just as a refresher, here's what it sounds like. Uh, just a riff that was in my mind from the other day and then the drums and bass that we built around it. Okay, so to me, that sounds like a good intro to a song, and it also sounds like it could be a chorus riff. And a lot of the time, that's how I think about songs. I think of the intro riff also being the chorus riff. You're introduced to that riff at the beginning, and a lot of the times, a riff that starts a song or riff the first one you start jamming is one that's hot, fresh in your mind. So this was fresh in my mind. I want to start the song with it, but it seems like a good thing to come back to. So we're going to start the song like this. We're going to fall into a verse riff, do a little verse, and then we'll come back to this for a chorus. Probably do the same verse riff again for verse two. Hit this again for chorus two. Maybe double it up. Maybe go into a little solo part. 
third chorus and finishing out. Now that is the most basic song structure there is, you know? That's what the Beatles do, that's what the Stones do, lots of classic rock, it's that kind of stuff. Now, as we get into more progressive metal and, and rock, as things go on, song structures begin to get a lot more complicated, getting into stuff like I Like, like Metallica, the Injustice For All album, there's no typical song structures there. They do have verses and choruses, they have bridges, intros, outros, and so from my songwriting and all the music I've written over the years, I incorporate all those things. Things. But basically, it all it's all about intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, end with a chorus, maybe an outro. And a perfect example that I thought of actually is Enter Sandman. Just the melody of that that opening riff, do 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 do, is also the chorus riff. Although that's actually a unique example because there's no vocals going on over that chorus really. Um, but it's it's the main themes, the melody, it's the hook, you know, and it's a really driving riff. So that's the kind of the theme we're going to go with in this tune, where this is going to be the intro. Like I said, we'll hit a verse. We'll go back into this for the chorus. Maybe I'll even demonstrate some like vocals, like just just to, sh to show you like what I'm thinking as I go through this. Again, I'm going to keep it general, uh, you know, just for for what this is, and because I want to keep it general for, for for the video. If I get too crazy here, I may lose some of you. If I haven't already, because I'm going through some thought salad here or whatever, but really just trying to explain it to lay it out so it's as easy for everybody to understand as possible. It's basically about the principles of this that you can apply to your songwriting then, and you could take it wherever you want. You can get prog as progressive as you want, or you can get as simple as you want. Just remember, the more simple it is, those are the money makers. All right, so again, we got the same session brought up here. We ended this little riff like this. Okay, so I'll actually play the second half of this just so we can get, get a vibe. Something like that is what I'm feeling. Back into this chorus. So that's going to be easy. We're in. So like. something like that. So as I said in that first video, when I'm coming up with the riff, I'll usually track it first and then I'll find out what the tempo is. But this is another big topic one I can go to in for a long time, but I'm going to keep this simple. In this case, I have a feeling that we should just stick with the 120, which with the click track sounds like this. Great songwriting to me has tempo changes and variations, especially based on feel and mood of what's happening in the song, how it drives the mood of the song or the vibe of the song. Um, there's also numerous key change, not numerous, but necessary key changes in key parts. Uh, but I let those things speak to me. If you go into a song thinking, oh, I'm going to have multiple tempo changes, I'm going to have multiple key changes, that's maybe forced. Again, it's about letting the song speak to you. And if this song, this part told me, oh, it would sound better to increase the tempo or decrease the tempo to go to a certain riff, then that's what I would do. But in this case, it's telling me to just stay in this vibe. And that's what we're going to do. It's also a downfall of writing by yourself in a computer to a click like this. If there was a group of guys standing around, there'd be lots of different ideas and different minds working together. And there'd be different ideas would be discussed and talked about that one mind wouldn't be able to think about. So a lot of you have heard me stress that before. I think that the best material comes from a collaboration of minds, but we don't have a collaboration of minds right now. We just got this noggin right here, and we're going to stay in this tempo, and we're going to stay in this key, too. Which, in this tuning, we're in drop C right now. I think that's A sharp. Or wait, yes, yes, A sharp. Anyways, irrelevant. But I'm going to hit that. Let's just see what happens here. So, a 
lots of different picking variations, stuff like that, that it would take me time to memorize so I could do the other side, the other rhythm track of this. So I'm just gonna simplify that. I like those chord changes, I like that feel. I'm just gonna keep this simple here. Okay, so I kind of like that. I like where that, that was going. And I'm gonna show you a trick here too. Once I really lock it in, I'll do it twice. And then I can just take that second half, the, the, what, I, what I did, if it, as long as it's, uh, if I did the second half, or I did it twice in a row perfectly, I can take the second half, cut it, and just move it over underneath. I'll show you how I do that so I don't even have to retrack it again, as long as I think I did it well. So I'm gonna try to get it two times in a row perfectly, and then I'll just show you how I can make those work for the situation. Okay, I decided I wanted to do a slightly different tail on there, but I'm still gonna show you this trick. to the beginning here, so we're gonna look for the halfway point. Right there is where it repeats. So I'm just gonna cut it, and I'm gonna drag it onto my other guitar track after Pro Tools hiccups here. When you guys saw that was happening in my video from the other day, I read online that this new version of Pro Tools, version 2021.6, lots of guys are having this exact same issue. So let's hear how this sounds. Okay, something wrong with that picking pattern I see here. Oh, maybe I'm just off a bit like that. Yeah, something is different, but let's find out. Okay, and then I could simply copy that again. And that would be the second time it happens here. I'm just gonna duplicate. Okay, you can see how that might work, but I'm gonna retrack it because I want to put a slightly different tail on there, and you'll see how this is going to work out. As I'm doing this kind of stuff, just thoughts are happening left and right in my mind. They're firing like crazy, and uh, like it's just, I'm also trying to explain all this as it's happening at the same time too, so it's, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but here we go. I'm going to track this, and then I'm going to end up tracking it on the other side. <laughs> See why I did that pause a little bit earlier and I'll do the other side. Hope I can ma match this nicely. Good. That sounded pretty good. Now I stopped that early because I can, I can already picture in my head the drums doing a little thing and a little pause, some vocal in there. And we're gonna fall right back into that chorus beautifully. Check this out. You can already smell it. Slightly different muting pattern there. Oh, you know what? I can steal this guy. Just gonna fix that real quick. I bet this is gonna be fun. 
Oops, nope, cannot. I'm gonna punch that real quick. I think that's gonna be it. Pretty close there. I didn't want to get into big editing here or anything, but I'm just gonna make this sound a little bit better. All right. And all right. Cool. Remember those fades I talked about? We're good. Okay, now check this out as we get this chorus back in here. Change up these fills in a little bit here too. Watch this. Oh, we need that pop, pop, pop. Okay. nice especially when you hear some drums in there which we're gonna do i'm also gonna since we have the same fill here i'm not gonna spend tons of time changing fills around but i this is what i would do i wouldn't have the same fill some, if you guys from the first video this is a copy and a paste for this drum fill here so to spice it up i'm gonna simply this is going tom one tom two tom three so i'm just gonna take tom one and go to snares so it's gonna go and then we're just going to go one, two, three with some dun 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 uh, on some big toms there. Let's see. Okay, maybe this one. Okay, and another little trick here. I'm gonna go into slip mode so it's not right on the grid, and I'm gonna offset one hand a little bit there, and it gives a little bit of a flam. Listen to this. Okay, now we need a verse beat here. Things to think about. We are already on the hats throughout the entire. We're already on the hats throughout the entire uh, uh, intro here, so we're going to switch it up somehow. We can do anything. I could do a tom beat. Could go to the crashes. Could go to the chinas or whatever. I'm going to go into the crash so that we fall back into the hats again in what's going to be the first chorus, uh, which is the intro riff. But it's going to be the first chorus. You'll see what's going to happen vocally. I'll, I'll just try to spit something like I said. But anyways. Let's uh, go to the crash, and we're going to pick up the beat a little bit, too. So we got like a laid-back one-two beat in the intro. So let's pick it up. So to do that, remember I said before, start with the uh, downbeat, which we already have there. Good kick. So I bet a snare is going to be here. Yep, and basically we're gonna alternate. Kick, snare, kick, snare. Good, I'm gonna do a crash, every one of those. See what that sounds like. Okay, I'm just going 
gonna continue on with these. Until we get halfway and then I'll copy and paste them. snares there to switch it up like doubles see that it's weird that's the sound I was going for okay maybe even another one that. Oh, see, by copying and pasting, I copied over my, the, the fill thing that I had there. Um, so we're gonna go grab that again from right here. Set. I'm guessing here. No. No. See what that sounds like. I meant to duplicate this over, and there would be. There couldn't be a crash there. That's gonna feel nice. One other thing too, when you're writing MIDI drums, think how many arms a guy has. If he's hitting a snare here, ah, oh, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, he could do that. He could hit a crash. Yeah, yeah. Definitely could. Be a left crash, probably over a snare. Ba -up, ba -up, ba -up, yep. Okay. So just be aware of what a drummer could actually do. Andles used to joke that he's beach new, that guy with like the six or nine arms, because we'd ask him to do so many things at the same time. You know, but that's, that crash wasn't even necessary. Cool. So Went from that intro into that verse, fell right into the chorus. Let's throw in a little bass over this verse here. It's going to be super easy. We're just going to follow the chords. So it's going to be that 10. Uh, I showed a cool trick in the first video of where to find notes on the bass quickly on guitar by starting from the middle C here. If that's your open, say you're on the fifth fret, you just go up five. One, two, three, four, five, and it should match up. We're going to be on 10. Okay. I hope I was in the right spot here. 
So it sounds like we go, and we'll look at that picking pattern, and we'll match that. Let's see what that sounds like. And then, so open, one, two, three, four, five, six. So five, six. Okay, be right here. I'm looking at the guitar notes right here. So this is, Wait, maybe it's right here. Hold on. Yep, then Bodo. So I'm looking at the red here again. I know it's going to go to about right here. And then we're going to see. Do -do -do -do. So six, three. I think it's supposed to be right there. I did. Guessing that that's the right one, hold on. That's right. I'm just gonna double check by getting the guitar out of there and here. And... It sounded like a little came a little bit early. Yep. Good. Okay. And this is the first note of the repeat. So when I copy. Guessing it's gonna go like this. Let's just see. Am I gonna go lucky? No. Okay. So I'm gonna start with that da 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 da, because I know that's gonna be right. And I could put that right here. And then 
minus 10. Let me get rid of this stuff because we stop it here like this. That's a little long. So we'll bring it back in like that. Good. See how nice this is to have a template set up. You can just pick back up the next day where you were writing. You got this, good to go. And uh, you know, save your template, songwriting template like this for the next time you come back. Bringing these guys out to where they need to be. When you're copying and pasting, you need to be aware of cuts and what's going on, what's coming from where. Here's what we got. With the bass. Good. Now, one thing I'll do every once in a while is just give these, they all sound a tiny bit rushed. Again, I'm not practiced at this, so uh, it isn't as tight as it could be. And here's like an example of what we got so far. I'm just gonna scat some vocals to show you. So we start with the intro. Hey, it's a pretty cool song, right? Sounding all right, you know? <laughs> Here we are in a pro tool session I'm trying to show you all I know I hope it works and you take something from this Because it's all I know When we coding guitar, bass and drums Super easily we fell right into the chorus and it feels good to me. Let's do it again. See, so I'm going to double that this chorus here because uh, it felt like I should keep going with it. You know, the chorus should be a little bit longer. So I'm going to just double this chorus and then I'll probably switch up the beat a little bit underneath too to, to make it a little bit different. Let's we'll see what happens. Actually, I heard something else too. I may want to switch up the second half of the, of the guitar melody. And we're going to hit right back into a second verse there. No, no, we'll double that chorus and then we'll go into a verse. So let's just see what happens. Switching little things up like this, changing drum beats, changing tails, changing little melodies, makes it sound not copy and pasted. If you really are just copy and pasting the same thing over and over again, eventually it's gonna sound like that and it won't be as interesting. So, um, you know, by watch what we're gonna do here and it'll make this sound not copy and pasted. I got lucky there, hold on. Pop that in, see what happens. Time. 
Now I can just check this out. I'll just drag this to the other side and stay on my recorded track here that I'm already on. Good, like that. I think that was better than the first one, so I'm actually going to just pull that right back over and do it one more time. sound like I like it and it's gonna just add a little extra flavor to the second half of this chorus. Check it out. Okay, so now I want to double this whole chorus. figure out where my start and stop points are. So it's gonna be right here. tracks that I want. Frozen Pro Tools. Got everything there. We're going to duplicate that over. It should be good. Okay, now about the drum beat for the second half. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, sorry, my mind wandered about changing these fills because all these fills are still just the same. It's that same triple. So definitely something you want to address. I don't know that I'm just going to address it right now, maybe here or there. I don't know how much time I want to spend with you guys here uh, just changing up all these drum fills or whatever. This is definitely something you want to do so it doesn't just sound like the same thing over and over again. I'm just going to add in a couple extra kicks here. Let's see what this sounds like. Yeah, a little just pick up in between each one. It's just going to add a little extra flair just to do this simple little trick. Let's just do a simple, simple. Just to switch something up here and see what happens. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy verse two and the whole second chorus.
what I did was I just copied my whole selection, exactly what I wanted, making sure my start and end, my grid lines were exactly where they needed to be, and then I duplicated it over, maybe different in your software, but it just took exactly what I had and duplicated it right after it. So here we are in course two. Now I got a little idea. Now we're in the second half of course two. What we're gonna do is we're gonna I'm gonna do a little solo here. Little solo section. So so far we've got intro, verse one, chorus one, verse two, chorus two. We're gonna drop into a little solo, which is gonna be like the bridge. We'll finish out with a final chorus, and it'll be a typical Rolling Stone cover hit. Let's see. Copy that, and I'm going to put it right here. I don't know why this isn't getting all these all of these tracks selected each time. Something up here, I don't know what yet. Again, I just installed this new version of Pro Tools and getting used to this new system and how everything works. I'll eventually get my workflow back to super fast like I like it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute these melody tracks and let the solo be the melody. So we're going to bust in like this. <laughs> basically just the verse and chorus part with the melody tracks muted there. If they weren't muted. Muted. Why isn't that working? Okay. Muted. All right. Rather than spending time switching up the drums there, let's just get to a solo here and just see what happens. I'm just gonna try to improv something. I'm gonna go a new mono audio track there. Call this solo. I'm gonna copy over my just same guitar thing here. I would spend time getting a solo tone, um, you know, if I were super serious about this, but instead I'm just gonna bring up the same guitar track. I'm gonna try, just put a little, um, little delay on it. Let's try, what am I looking for? Um, looking for my waves of guitar. Two, guitar stop two. So, no, nope, my presets are no longer here. It's gonna put a little delay there. Let's see what that sounds like. Looking for. Let's see if there's any. Let's see what this is. Definitely not. <laughs> this is not what I'm looking for here. That's now we're talking. That's what we're talking about there. Not so much. 
wash there. Okay, good enough. Just gonna pop a little something here, see what happens. Usually wanna get a little more volume out of this too, just well, at least what we're tracking. Then I'll mix it in a little bit more just so I can hear what's going on. Too loud. Spots I'd fix up there. So good enough for now. We got a little lead in there. Um, now we're just going to head back into the final chorus, little outro, and we'll be done. Fingers crossed, you know. I don't know if this is gonna pop up. We need the pop up pop probably. So it's going to be pop, pop, pop. Does it happen right after that? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to trial and error it. So it's gonna have to, I want it to come in. Bop, bop, bop. So we're gonna undo that. It's gonna come in on this guy. Switch 
these to crashes for the front. So here we go solo. Changing these fills and stuff like that and the drums will help these transitions. Did it is, let's see. Just a little outro is all we need. Watch this. Let's see. Just give myself a little marker there so I know where that's at. Here. I want to get all my tracks. Hopefully this works. Not really. I'm not Shifting these slightly, like I talked about before.
this is week. I realize we're getting over an hour here, guys, uh, just about. So I'd put way more thought into this. I don't want to sound like I'm shortchanging you either. Like, this is what I would do. This is what I would do. Oh, if I were doing this for real, blah, blah, blah. It's not like that. It's just that this stuff takes so much time, you know? I mean, it would work on songs for days. So I'm trying to just cram this into an hour here or whatever, but I'm just going to close it out with a little something. Even as simple as that, like we did before. Volume usually helps there. Or that one. That one was fun. So, that's it. We got a little tune here. We have one last listen. These drum, the drum fills are driving me crazy, but we're over an hour here. I'm just gonna point them out where I'd, where I'd change them as we'll go. We'll give it one last listen here. We'll listen together. Um, so anyways, appreciate everybody watching. I know this was, this is a lengthy one. Hopefully you picked something up. Hopefully it wasn't too boring for you though, but just go ahead, you know, let me know. You want more? You don't mind it this in depth? You want it more in depth? Um, you know, I'll keep them coming, you know? So here we go from the top song written from one riff, maybe two riffs in the shower one morning. And we got a little guy. Spiced it up 
of it Those girls are driving me crazy See how those crashes give it the final big chorus here? Crashes give it a little more emphasis. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I shortchanged you guys on the ending there. Should have come up with something better for that. Um, it's a lot of the same in this song, but, you know, a lot of hits are like that. Certainly not saying this is going to be a hit, but a lot of hits are like that. It's, it's all about how the vocal carries it. The vocals are the most important thing in the world. It doesn't even matter what's going on with the guitars and drums and bass. If the vocals suck, the song sucks. So just keep that in mind. Um, this has a lot of vocal potential, you know, a lot of notes you could dance around in there. And so that's a good thing about it. Um, if I were spending days with this, you know, I would I would switch some things up, change some melodies here and there, definitely change some, some of the drums just just to spice it up. But I don't mind that it's it's a consistent melody throughout, you know, in your album, have a couple tunes like this, have some more with some more diversity in it. It's all how you do with it. I just wanted to give you a scope into just kind of how I think about the stuff. I hope I relayed that a little bit in this just short example here, lengthy video, but short example with the song here. I will cut it off right now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. If you liked the video, make sure you subscribe, give it a thumbs up for me. Cheers and I'll see you on the next one. Yeah.